What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here playing a little bit of Modern Warfare 2. It's been a long time since I played this game. I've been wanting to get back into the older Call of Duties and try some of the ones I've never had the opportunity of playing. I have recently bought my, uh, Black Ops 1 and uh, it came in the mail and I've been trying that. Luckily for me, I, I guess I can count my blessings. I haven't had any hacked games. I've been playing Modern Warfare 2. I haven't seen any hackers. I played Modern Warfare 3 with the wife. We played that a lot and haven't seen any hackers. And then Black Ops 1, I haven't seen any hackers. And I'm seeing, you know, the likes and dislikes of all these games. I gotta say, I'm having a great time. What's your best of the older Call of Duty games? Leave it in the comment section below. Now, on to the subject of this video. We all know that Sledgehammer Games has been working on Advanced Warfare for some time now. And uh, they did their reveal on the 4th, and I got a little bit of information for you guys about that reveal. I'm going to talk about some of the specifics of the game, as well as my own thoughts on these specifics, and what I think could or could not happen, and something else that I think could be awesome if they actually did it. I don't think they will, but this idea would be awesome, I think. So you guys let me know if my idea at the end of this video is something that you would find exciting in a Call of Duty game. First of all, uh, this game has been in development at Sledgehammer now for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. And uh, it's been in development for a number of years now. A separate studio will be named later. And they're working on the Xbox One, I mean Xbox 360 and PS3 versions of the game. But there is no word on the Nintendo Wii U version. So, again, this game is being developed by Sledgehammer in-house for next-gen consoles and PC. And uh, they've got a separate entity that's going to come in and port it down to the old consoles. And that excludes the Wii U at this point. Now, it doesn't mean the Wii U won't be getting it. I know there are a lot of Wii U owners out there who are, you know, itching to play the new COD. Uh, if Nintendo plays their cards right and if this, this developer is able to port it down to the Nintendo Wii U, I don't see any reason why they would exclude that console. Alright, the game runs on a new and unsuspect, unspecified game engine. Now this is something that I've been thinking, I actually said this on the Beastly Thought Show Sunday, uh, that I didn't think that this game was running on a regurgitated version of the old engine that when, when this new generation of game consoles came out I felt that they had something to prove something to something new they wanted to build from the ground up and it appears that at least they're trying to do that I don't know if they're going to repurpose any old uh, fragments of the old engine for this game now we know that Call of Duty has been known for repurposing cutscenes and you know using animations uh, so we'll have to keep our eyes open for that, but I'm an optimist and uh, hopefully this is a whole new engine and it'll breathe new life into this series. Now, as far as the campaign goes, the story opens with a catastrophic event that Sledgehammer Games co-founder Michael Condry describes as like a global 9-11. There's a little more to go on, but major cities on multiple continents are affected by some kind of terrorism perpetrated by a terrorist organization called the KVA. So, of course, you got a war game. you got a game where there's big, huge factions, uh, you know, country versus country, country versus terrorist organization. It's going to be some type of global plot, or at least country plot, but it appears here this is going to affect multiple continents. So, this is going to be a big deal. Uh, and uh, hopefully it's, it's as exciting as it looks like it's going to be. Uh, I'm really pumped for this game. I'm going to play the single player campaign and then I'm going to jump into the multiplayer. So the game is set in 2054. So I'll be 74 years old uh, when this game takes place. So it's further in the future than Black Ops 2, meaning that we're going to have futuristic weapons, futuristic, you know, kill streaks. And I like it when you can open your imagination a little bit. Because, you know, when you go way back to the original CODs, these guns and weapons are things that already existed. You can't use your imagination. You can only use reference. But if you're going to go in the future, you can kind of look at what's in the world today and say, where will this be at in 40 years? Where could this be at in 40 years? And you can dream a little bit. And I think that's an awesome thing to do. And I would prefer personally to be able to dream when we're playing these kind of games and, and 
not be so grounded in reality. If I wanted a reality game, I'd watch the History Channel when they got muskets and stuff. Now in this game, you play as a character named Private Mitchell who is voiced by the prolific voice actor Troy Baker. You may know Baker from his recent roles in The Last of Us, he played as Joel. In Bioshock Infinite, he played as Booker. And in Batman Arkham Origins, he played as the Joker, which I thought was incredible because Mark Hamill's Joker was so untouchable. And somehow Baker was able to pull that off. The character Mitchell only speaks during cutscenes and never during gameplay. Unlike past Call of Duty games, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare has only one protagonist. I think that's a great idea. You got one character, you got one central story, you got one person to really care about. If you got two or three characters and something happens to one, you, you're drifting on to the other or you got your favorite. But if you got one central character and a story that is engaging, I think it pulls in the viewer in a much deeper sense. So I think that's a better idea. I, I like that more than having two or three protagonists. On a side note, Kevin Spacey says he was very excited about joining the game when he was originally approached for the game. Now, uh, in the trailer, we get to see Kevin Spacey doing his thing, uh, his Frank Underwood. If, if you guys know anything about House of Cards, in House of Cards, he basically acts the exact same way as he did in his trailer in House of Cards. He is a, a senator who has become president, and now we're waiting for the third season. But that's how he acts. He acts ruthless, and he does whatever he needs to do to get the job done. And I'm, I'm super excited for the campaign of this game because it, they finally have someone in the campaign that I'm excited to see. Now, in the game, you'll earn points every mission that, uh, in every mission that can be used to upgrade your exosuit. Using the exosuit, you can climb walls with magnetic gloves, boost, dodge toward cover, uh, perform super jumps that let you get to higher ground, use optic camouflage for cloaking, and hover in midair. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this damn exosuit that I don't know though, how are they going to be able to implement this in a multiplayer game? Because if you give a, a, a character too much power in a multiplayer game, uh, it's going to mess with the balance. Uh, you know, cloaking, that's going to be an issue in multiplayer. That's the main issue. I don't really have any issue with hovering in the air or climbing up walls, but if you give these characters too much flexibility, it's going to mess with the, the balance. So I'm really intrigued to see how Sledgehammer works on that. Now, there's been no official word on the co-op mode, but Kylie does say that you can probably imagine the possibilities just based on what you saw in the single player campaign. Now, but we, we do know that Call of Duty usually doesn't have the same thing in the single player they do in the multiplayer, so I'm really intrigued to see what they do. Also, there's going to be a co-op mode. Now, we know in previous iterations of Call of Duty, we've had Zombies mode, we've had Spec Ops mode, we've had Onslaught, and now we've got Sledgehammer doing their own thing. And I was asked yesterday what I thought would be a good idea, something they could do on their own to kind of own the, the co-op space. And I was thinking if they were able to get the rights to the Terminator franchise for the T-800s, the Arnold Schwarzenegger versions, to be in the game, a post-apocalyptic world where you and three of your buddies could go out and shoot. And these T-800s would be after you. And every few waves, maybe you get a T-1000, the Liquid Terminator. And maybe you get some of the flying machines coming to, to take you out. I think if somehow Sledgehammer were to get the rights of the Terminator franchise and do a co-op mode, kind of the same way they did with Michael Myers and the Predator, they can do it. There's tons of money in the Call of Duty name. Uh, that it would be an amazing co-op experience. It would be foreboding, you know, dark. And you got these T-800s, you shoot the skin off of them, and all of a sudden you see the metal and the red eyes coming after you. You guys let me know what you think about the Terminator idea for co-op mode. I hope you guys enjoyed the footage. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.